Hey there Tano, it's Shadow Scythe, and today is another on the spot review, this time featuring the Ignis Wraith. Now, many of you, as many of you know, the Ignis Wraith was a clan reward for the Pacifism Defect event. However, if you and the only ways to get it were either reaching the clan participation goal for your clan, which got the blueprint sent as an as a mail attachment to everybody who participated or by meeting your clan or your clan tiers required point threshold however you could then go above and beyond this to get a fully built one with a weapon slot and catalyst for everybody in your clan once again by uh, meeting the required threshold for that or if your clan was in the top 10% of the leaderboards for your clan tier, your clan would then get a monopoly on the Ignis Wraith blueprint and have it as a permanent feature in your uh, chem lab research. Anyway, now let's jump right into the stats. Now, the Ignis Wraith does have a lower base damage than the Ignis of 25 heat damage over the Ignis's 27. However, it does have a 5% a increase to its status per second, bringing it up to 30 instead of 25. It has a magazine size of 200 over the standard Ignis's 150. And it has a critical chance increase of... 7% bringing it from 5 to 12. The other thing that is not mentioned in the base stats here is that the ammo maximum for the Ignis Wraith is also 800 over the Ignis's standard 750. And like all Wraith weapons with other than them not having a skin uh, well, unless they have a skin, the only thing that you can change on them, unfortunately, is their energy color. And just so that we can actually clearly see this... Eh, you know what? Let's use this as an energy color. Why not have some pink fire? Providing. Yep. Not colorable, just figured I'd test that out because they were saying about how they would consider making all of the Wraith and Vandal weapons tintable. Just like all other older clan research weapons, as well as the original Ignis itself, there are no innate polarities in this weapon. And actually, if I'm correct, all event weapons came with no innate polarities in them. So I've just got Serration, Split Chamber, Rhyme Rounds, and Wildfire, bringing me up to 48 status per second with 244 blast damage. Actually, how much capacity? Actually, I'm going to drop Wildfire and throw on Sinister Reach. Just because I like having that extra bit of reach. And we are going to hopefully jump right into a mission. Let's see what invasions are going on. Europa. Morax. Exterminate. Yeah, we aren't going to do any of those because I... I'm primarily only going to be using the Ignis, and I've got a feeling those are going to be just a tad too much for me to handle on my own. Elbows. And what I will do is I will skip all of this extra bullshit until I am right into a mission. Eh, fuck it. Guess we will do it. Actually, 
I'll switch it to public, this way if people join, they join, and I'm not totally having my ass handed to me. Three, two, one. The other reason as to why I was kind of worried about this is the fact that the Ember that I'm running is only level 18, because it is actually the, the uh, my second Ember Prime that I got. And if you guys are wondering why the hell I have two, I have two because originally I wanted to get the original Ember again, and ended up not doing that because Let's of the fact out. that they had just unvaulted Ember Prime, and I wanted the Prime accessories. As well, well as I wanted the prime accessories that came with Frost, so I figured I'd just spend the 60 bucks and get the combined bundle. Now, this does have an interesting new sound effect over the uh, standard Ignis. Those of you who have used the... Uh, standard one, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I will do a comparison video per request, but otherwise the only thing I'm going to focus on with this video is the Ignis Ring. And it has no alt fire mechanic to speak of. And I'm following them for some weird ass reason. I do not know why. I guess that's why I was following them. But the overall design on the Ignis Wraith is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that's the thing, is, like, the designs on the Wraith and Vandal weapons are beautiful. It's just the fact that they aren't tintable, so doing any sort of fashion frame with them is... ...all for naught. And we have a tryhard in the squad using the damn... ...uh... Tellos Boltes, that's what they are. The one fucking melee weapon in the game that I absolutely hate. They have broken their ranks and they are on the run. Another successful mission. Find extraction. Definitely there is damage fall off against single enemies, like with the basic Ignis, as you guys just saw. But between, but between everything... The Ignis Wraith has more sustained damage than the regular Ignis does, but it doesn't have as much initial damage. Another job well executed. But that is going to do it for this episode of On The Spot. If you like the video, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. Click the bell icon to stay up to date with any future videos. Follow me on Twitter for any additional news. Link in the description box below. If you would like to support the channel and its endeavors, check out my Patreon link in the description box below. As well as, if you want to keep up with me or any other streamers check out my player.me link in the description box below it is a referral link for you guys to join it is 100 percent free it is a social media site for gamers 
by gamers. So go ahead and check that out. But it's been fun. It's been fun. I would have loved to show you more with the Ignis Wraith. Unfortunately, there just really isn't much to show. It's some slight stat changes over the regular Ignis. It's not a. It's not really a brand new weapon. So for the most part, you guys already know to what to expect. It's just got a funky ass design and some new sound effects to go with the stat changes. Until next time, Tenno. Stick to the shadows.